Tobias is taking his daughter Nora to see the troll peaks in the mountains of Romsdalen, Norway. The story says that 13 trolls got so drunk at a wedding here that they lost track of time and turned into mountains. Nora thinks she's too old for fairy tales now. This makes Tobias sad. So he tells her that you have to believe in something to see it. 20 years later, Nora is an archaeologist and she is on a dig with her team on the Atlantic coast of northwestern Norway. Most of them are ready to give up because they haven't found anything in six months and money is running out. But Nora is stubborn and keeps going. Her hard work pays off, and she finds a dinosaur skull. To celebrate, the team throws a party. In the Davra Mountains, a group of builders is digging through the mountains to make room for a new railway. Activists who are against this kind of damage to nature have paid a lot of attention to this, but their presence is ignored. When the explosives are finally set off to start the tunnel, something deep inside the mountains grumbles and causes a collapse that not all of the workers can get away from fast enough. The Norwegian armed forces notice this event and the earthquakes it causes right away. They send a reconnaissance plane to find out what happened. Sigrid is in charge of the cameras on those planes. She quickly puts together a series of images that she shows to her bosses, who decide that this is important enough to tell Prime Minister Barrett. On her way to the base, Barrett is told about all the damage done by unknown forces and shown the pictures they took, which look like footprints to Barrett's advisor, Andreas. Barrett thinks it's funny but not possible, so she gives Andreas two jobs to keep this information from the press and to find some scientists who might be able to help them with this problem. Moments later, a helicopter comes and picks Nora up in the middle of her party. The pilot tells her that she needs to go with her to look at a matter of national security. Andreas welcomes Nora to the base and takes her to a secret meeting where Barrett, the most important military leaders, and a few other scientists are talking about what might have happened in the mountains. When Nora says she is a paleontologist, People don't take her very seriously because dinosaurs are extinct and couldn't have caused this. Even though the team hasn't ruled out the possibility of a military attack from another country, the reports so far seem to support the idea that the cause is geological. Pictures of a crater in depressions in the landscape show up on the screen. This makes the scientists come up with ideas like sinkholes or gas pockets deep underground. Nora interrupts them to say that those craters are clearly footprints, but once again, no one listens to her because footprints would mean monsters, which is a stupid idea. Sigurd interrupts again because she got into the phone of one of the activists and found live footage of the incident. The destruction is very upsetting to see, but Nora won't let the others go back to their gas theories until Sigurd plays the video again, but this time more slowly. In the background, there is a sound that sounds like an animal roaring, and in the shadows, among the falling rocks, there is a huge, mysterious shape that looks like a person. In Lesha, an old married couple is trying to figure out what's wrong with their dog because it won't stop barking. All of a sudden, the whole house starts to shake, so the couple runs into their basement to hide before everything starts to fall apart and the power goes out. When the shaking stops, the couple goes outside to see that their house is completely destroyed, but at least their dog is fine. Back at the base, the leaders still don't think the footprints could have been made by a giant creature. Nora reminds them that whatever it is, they need to do something about it instead of sitting around and arguing for hours. Barrett likes the way she acts, so she makes Nora the official scientific advisor and asks her to go to Lesha with Andreas to find out what happened. Andreas asks Nora how she became a paleontologist on the helicopter. Nora tells him that she has always loved nature and that her love of fairy tales led her to want to look for real monsters underground. Her mother died when she was 10, and her dad was a professor of origin mythologies and folklore, but as he got older, he had a harder time telling fact from fiction. Nora hasn't seen Tobias in years because of this. Andreas says he wants to be a writer and is excited about the idea that this might have been caused by something supernatural. When they get to their destination, Nora cuts him off because she is shocked by the damage to the landscape. The military is already securing the area, and Nora is welcomed by Captain Christopher, who shows them the tracks that came from across the river and into the valley, then went two miles south into the mountains before stopping. The soldiers searched the whole area, but they didn't find any more clues. Nora asks the old couple some questions, but they couldn't see much because a huge moving figure was blocking the sun. But they did hear something, a loud howling that sounded like a very sad tune. After that, Nora takes a closer look at the damage and notices a very strange and strong smell that she decides to call hypernature. She also uses UV light to look for signs of life, but all she finds is dirt and rocks. Nora asks to be taken to the place where the tracks suddenly stop, but the thermal scanner shows no signs of life and only mountains. Nora wonders if this creature can hide because it is too big to hide or disappear. Nora is starting to think of some ideas, but she is still not sure. She takes Christopher and Andreas to see Tobias, 
who comes out with a gun when he sees strangers on his property, especially an armed soldier. After Nora tells him that this is the daughter he hasn't seen in years, Tobias agrees to let them in, but he has to put on some pants first. Tobias's house is full of paperclips and books that show how much he wants to find a troll, a mythical creature. Nora stops him from talking about all of his theories about trolls being real and the witnesses being silenced. Instead, she asks him to pay attention to the footage she is about to show him saying that she thinks his old work may have some clues. He knows these mountains better than anyone else. Tobias, on the other hand, thinks that this footage proves that his troll theory is true. When Nora says that scientists would have already found troll DNA if they were real, Tobias reminds her that the Christianization of Norway got rid of all the mythical creatures and that he was sent to the loony bin just as he was about to tell the truth. He thinks that the people in charge have always known and that fairy tales were made to make trolls look bad and stupid when they're actually pretty smart. Nora can't believe what she's hearing, but Tobias is too excited to say anything so he joins the team to keep looking into it. When they get to the place where the tracks end, Tobia notices right away that the landscape doesn't match the maps. He also says that this is like going on an adventure with his daughter again, but Nora doesn't want this to be a way for them to get back together. Suddenly, they smell hypernature, and the sky gets darker as the mountain behind them opens an eye. It turns out that both the father and the daughter were right. The creature is a troll, and because of its ability to blend in, it has been pretending to be a part of the mountain. This is why the terrain was wrong. The troll stands up and roars at them, which makes the team run back to the helicopter to get away. Still, they manage to catch the troll on camera, and when the base gets the transmission, they can no longer deny the truth. Christopher brings the group to his military camp so he can call the base and tell them what they found out. Nora keeps saying unknown creature so she doesn't look crazy, but Tobias stops her to tell everyone it's a troll that didn't like the building work in the mountains, which Tobias thinks is disrespectful to nature. The leaders think he's crazy and kick him out, but Nora's request for more time is also ignored. They are worried about the safety of their country, so they will go ahead and plan a military operation. After that, Nora is mad at her dad for ruining everything, and she wants to leave. Tobias talks to her about how he knows this isn't a fairy tale, and that this isn't a troll that can be pushed back with weapons and sunlight. The troll woke up alone and scared, so weapons will only make it matter. Also, nature always fights back. Nora agrees that he's right and stays. Now all they have to do is get Christopher to agree to take them with him. He says no at first, but Nora begs him, and he agrees to hide the three of them in his helicopter as long as they promise to do what he says. By the time the whole military operation gets to Heidel, it is dark. While they wait for the troll to show up, Tobias and Nora talk about the old fairy tales they used to tell each other when they went on adventures. This helps them make up. A moment later, the troll shows up but when he gets close enough, he stops moving and Tobias is sure that means it knows they are there. Tobias warned the soldiers not to shoot at the troll, but they did it anyway. The bullets and explosions did nothing to stop the troll from attacking back, just as Tobias said they would. Everyone starts running away as the troll destroys everything in its way, including the cameras that were sending information about the operation to the main base. The team hides behind a tree with a wounded soldier. As they get ready to leave, the troll reaches down and grabs the soldier to eat him. Tobias says the troll probably smelled the blood from the soldier's wounds. Nora, Andreas, and Christopher all want to leave, but Tobias decides to go up to the troll and talk to it in a friendly way. Everyone is shocked when the troll stops moving and calmly groans in response to Tobias's words, but not all of the soldiers got the message. Again, a truck starts shooting at the troll. When the troll turns around to fight back, it hits Tobias by accident. Nora runs to her father's side as the troll walks away. Tobias mumbles the palace. The king, home and tells his daughter to remember to believe before he dies. When they get back to the base, Nora looks over Tobias' research to take her mind off the pain and try to find a way out. When Andreas and Christopher come to check on her, they tell her that they have lost sight of the troll for now, but that the army is getting ready for an airstrike. Nora thinks that this attack will have the same result as the first one, which means they need to think outside the box. Fairy tales say that trolls don't like the sun, but this one has been seen out in the sun. Tobias's comment that the Christians in Norway killed all the trolls gives Nora an idea. They get in touch with Barrett and the others to tell them that stories say trolls used to throw rocks at churches churches when they heard bells, so they need to use bells. The leaders think this is crazy, so Christopher has to step in and remind them that nothing has worked so far and they need to find other options. Reluctantly, Barrett agrees to let them go ahead with the plan. A few seconds later, the troll reappears and moves closer to the Hunterfossen family park, making everyone in the crowd very scared. Christopher and Nora arrive in a helicopter, guiding a whole hover that is carrying big bells. Everyone else is running away, except for a little girl who wants to watch the creature. They put these bells all around the troll and make them ring. Nora 
Sora was right, the noise does hurt the troll's ears, but the troll doesn't mind attacking to protect himself, and he does so by hitting the helicopters and causing them to crash. When one is about to fall on top of the little girl, the troll grabs the helicopter to save her before it walks away. Since this happened in a public place, everyone now knows about the troll and that it is heading to the capital city. Every country's news shows talk about the event and clips recorded on phones spread quickly on social media. When the team gets back to the base, Barrett gets mad when Nora says that the bells did work, so they should try again from a different angle. Instead of listening to her, Barrett kicks Nora out of the base. Nora runs into Christopher on her way out, and he tells her that he thinks Barrett is making a mistake and that he'll be there for her if she ever needs anything. The military leaders tell Barrett in the meeting room about some dangerous missiles that haven't been approved yet. Barrett can't believe she didn't know about this. Andreas says that these kinds of weapons shouldn't even be considered, but this only gets him kicked out of the room. Since he knows he won't be taken seriously, he decides to quit and tell Nora to get ready because they're leaving the city. Moments later, Barrett goes on TV and officially declares a state of emergency. She asks everyone to work together while the soldiers take over to get ready for the next operation and help everyone get out of the city without any problems. Nora and Andreas are in the same car and get stuck in traffic. Nora uses this time to keep looking at Tobias' research. The pages keep saying sending and something about a gatekeeper, which makes Andreas think it could be Rickard sending, the Lord Chamberlain at the Royal Palace. Nora remembers that Tobias said King, Palace, home right before he died, so she figures out that they need to go to the Royal Palace. Andreas drives them there, and the guards at the gate stop them. Sending comes right away to open the gate for them, because he knew Tobias or someone related to him would show up soon. Sending says that he respected Tobias, even though Tobias hated him, and that he was one of the few people who found the secret under the palace because he was so stubborn. Once upon a time, it was thought to be lucky to build a palace on top of the home of another king. It turns out that this palace was built on top of where the troll king used to live. Sending takes Nora and Andreas to a tunnel full of troll bones and tells them that when Christians took over Norway, they killed everything that went against their beliefs. For example, they attacked the royal troll family and left only one baby alive to lure the king into the mount. They put it inside a cave and left it there to die. Tobias found out about all of this 12 years ago, and Sending sent him to the insane asylum to keep the secret safe. Even though he feels bad about what he did, he still thinks it was the right thing to do. This makes Nora very angry. Nora realizes that now is not the time to argue, because the troll king is coming home to the palace and they have to stop him. Nora sees that her UV light is hurting the bones as she looks around them. This means that the stories about sunlight were right after all. They have seen the troll out during the day, but because of the clouds and mountains, they haven't seen it in direct sunlight. Andreas says that they can't control the sun, but Nora has a plan. She calls Christopher to ask for his help, and he will set up a special trap while Nora and Andreas lure the troll to it. In the meantime, the troll has come to the city. Again, military attacks don't hurt it, so Barrett agrees to use the missiles. Sigurd sees that the leaders are getting ready to launch the missiles, so she calls Andreas to warn him. This means that they need to find a way to buy time. Andreas asks Sigurd to try to hack into the army system to stop the launch, while Christopher sets off alarms all over the city. This brings all of his soldier friends to his location to help him set up the trap. Sending also helps. He tells the guards to put one of the troll skulls on the big biggest truck they have, which Nora and Andreas will drive around the city to lure the troll away from the palace. Sigurd has to try a few times before she can get into the system, but once she does, she stops the missiles right away, giving Nora and Andreas the time they need. When the troll gets closer, they finally run away and show the skull on the back of the truck. This makes the troll roar in anger and go after them as planned. Nora calls Christopher to let him know they're on their way, so he gives a speech to his soldiers to get them ready for the monster when it finally shows up. Nora and Andreas drive crazily through the streets of Oslo until they reach the highway, where they lose the skull by accident. Before it sees its reflection on a building, the troll stops running to pick it up. It lets out a painful, sad groan for its lost children. When it tries to touch the glass, it breaks, startling the troll. It then drops the skull, which breaks into a million pieces when it hits the ground. The troll roars in pain because it is angry, showing Nora how sad it is to be the last of its kind. The creature comes after them to get back at them, so Nora goes back to her original plan and drives away, trying to avoid all the damage the troll is causing as best she can. At the base, Sigurd's hacking is found out, and her computer is taken so that the system can be reset. Nora and Andreas get to the area with the trap in a few seconds. They get out of the truck to finish luring the troll to the middle as it steps on the truck. Next, the troll tries to step on Nora, but at that moment, the soldiers turn on dozens of UV lights that burn the creature. The missile-carrying plane is also getting closer, but the pilot hesitates when he sees people on the ground. At the base, they argue about whether or not they should call it off. Sigurd punches the idiot who doesn't care about his people, and the operation is effectively called off. Barrett and the other people at the 
base can see on their screen that the troll is slowly dying, and Christopher's soldiers are already celebrating the victory. Nora, on the other hand, can't stand to hear her and see a life suffer like this, so she turns off the power to save it. Even as the soldiers are about to shoot, Nora stops them. Then, just like her father did, she walks up to the troll and asks it gently to go back to the safety of the mountains. The troll looks at her and thinks about what she said, but before it can do anything, the sun comes up and burns the troll until it is nothing but ashes. As everyone celebrates their victory, Andreas makes a joke about what they should call this new hill or monument, and Nora comes up with the name Tobias Boulder. When Barrett comes back a moment later, she thanks Nora for her work. Andreas reminds the Prime Minister that he quit and says he'll be a writer. As he walks away with Nora, he wonders if there might be more creatures hiding in Davra. In the meantime, something is moving under a pile of rocks deep in the mountains. 